None of this had to happen. It should not have happened. Two young lives taken in a senseless crash. And then I saw him in the wreckage. And I just ran. And he was gone. Tonight, a grieving mother remembers her little boy. A leak from the U.S. Supreme Court exposed something that could overturn a landmark decision. Honestly, I didn't think we'd ever see anything like this. Why it could mean an outright ban on abortion here in Utah. And the rally by people who are speaking out tonight. Rain, snow, and wind. It's all in tonight's forecast as I continue tracking the system. What you can expect for your morning drive. Wind will heat up and our next chance for valley snow. It was shocking, you know, because you, you don't expect this things happening. One car swallowed whole. Several homes flooded. What caused this destructive sinkhole in Salt Lake City? Live from Utah's news leader, Fox 13 News at 9 starts right now. It doesn't feel very real. Um, obviously, the memories that I have in my mind from last night are very real. Family, friends, and an entire community are grieving tonight. It's been a little more than 24 hours since a car careened into a corral at a horse stable in Eagle Mountain. That car not only damaged property, it ran over two three-year-old boys who died instantly. Tonight, Fox 13 News anchor Brian Schnee spoke to the mother of one of those boys who says Odin Ratliff and Hunter Jackson were new best friends who were inseparable. We heard the sirens last night. We had no idea what was going on. Carol Crane heard the news of two young boys tragically passing away. I guess uh, Odin liked tractors and trucks. It happened Monday night while three-year-olds Odin Ratliff and Hunter Jackson were inside of a corral playing in the dirt. I processed with uh, toy store visits and trucks and... He was a good kid. The memorial here in Eagle Mountain started with some balloons and nameplates growing out of flowers and some candles, and it even grew to include some toys for precious Odin, who loved his trucks. The barn is our safe haven. Odin's mom, Teresa, has been part of the vaulting club for years. It's a place where I go when I'm not okay, and, uh, and I hope that that is still the case. She was teaching a class Monday night. I had just seen him in the barn, not even two minutes prior. Um, and we heard a god-awful crash, and it lasted like 30 seconds. A driver speeding off the road, barreling through multiple fences, tearing through everything in his path. And we just, I was like, I have to go find him. And then I saw him in the wreckage, and I just ran. And he was gone. There was nothing I could have done. Both her son Odin and his friend Hunter were killed. I don't ever want to scream the way I did that day. Ever. Teresa says Odin and Hunter were friends because one day Odin took Hunter's hand and off they went to play with trucks in the corral. Odin was the most unique child I think I've ever met and I'm so blessed to have called him my son. Families now ripped apart trying to grieve and remember the best times they had with their three-year-old boys. I'm gonna miss him like crazy. And I already do. He... He's probably up there with a lot of people who love him right now. Always say I love you. In Eagle Mountain. And always mean it. Brian Schnee. Always. Fox 13 News, Utah. Because uh, he always did. Meanwhile, 25-year-old Kent Cody Barlow remains in the Utah County Jail, facing multiple felony charges tonight, including two counts of automobile homicide and reckless driving, along with drug possession. This is a mugshot from a prior arrest and conviction for drug possession back in 2018. Investigators believe he was using methamphetamine at the time of last night's crash. It sucks. Um, I've got grandkids that age. And uh, you, know, you don't have to be a parent, you don't have to be a grandparent to uh, understand the gravity of what happened here last night and the senseless 
uh, nature of, of what happened. You Barlow had three passengers in the car with him. The car, as you can see, was destroyed. Somehow, none of them suffered any life-threatening injuries. There were several more tragic, deadly accidents on Utah roads today. In Salt Lake City, a mother was killed, and her daughter was sent to the hospital in critical condition after police say a car hit them both while they were on the sidewalk. That woman has been identified as 23-year-old Libby Isabel Allen. Happened just before 11.30 this morning, near 9th East and 1700 South. Investigators say the driver took off, but police found and arrested him a short time later. He's been identified as 53-year-old Jack Archibald of West Valley City. We took that person into custody and we'll still be working on trying to sort through exactly what happened. It's still very early in this investigation and these investigations take quite a bit of time. Archibald now faces several charges, including automobile homicide, DUI, and leaving the scene of a crash involving a fatality. In Sandy, a five-year-old girl was hit and killed at about 10.45 this morning while playing outside her own home. Police say a postal worker who was delivering mail hit her while she was in the street. First responders tried their best to save her but could not. Police say this accident was difficult for everyone on scene. Yeah, these are really tragic situations. They try to uh, balance life well enough so that they can uh, cope with these situations, as well as um, the police department offers uh, multiple outlets for officers if they feel there's a need um, to talk to anybody to help deal with this. Police say neither speed nor impairment played a role in this accident. The 53-year-old driver stayed on the scene to help and is cooperating with the investigation. At about the same time in Spanish Fork, more bad news. Police say a 49-year-old cyclist in a crosswalk was hit by the rear wheels of a semi-truck turning from 10th North onto Highway 6. He was knocked off his bike and was run over. He died at the hospital. Police say the truck driver is also cooperating. Don't forget the best place to get breaking news alerts and updates 24-7 is the Fox 13 News app. Scan the QR code on your screen to download it right now. Or search for the Fox 13 News app in the Apple Store or Google Play. Many Utahns are speaking out tonight against a draft opinion from the U.S. Supreme Court that would overturn Roe v. Wade, which legalized abortion in this country since 1973. Fox 13 News reporter Jenna Bree went to the state capitol today where some Utahns rallied for reproductive rights. stupid. The people of Utah are not stupid. Jesse Salas is rallying behind an issue deeply personal to her. I was 14 years old. Um, well, I was actually 13 when I got pregnant. Um, it was non-consensual. She openly talks about her own abortion, hoping her story will get people to support reproductive rights. I'm a junior in college now. Like, like I am successful. I'm amazing. And I would not have had any of what I had had I, at 13 years old, carry a baby, you know? She says people who are anti-abortion don't understand the complexity of the issue. Babies are being killed with abortions, but what about mothers who have stillborns who need to have these same procedures to make sure that they can have more babies? So it just doesn't make any sense to do something like this. Organizers of today's rally not shocked to see this turn out at an event announced nearly hours beforehand. 80% of Utahns don't believe the state needs to have any more restrictions on abortion. And so it was amazing to see all the people here today, different generations. The American Civil Liberties of Utah wants everyone to remember safe abortions are still legal in the state for now. That the people of Utahns are going to make sure that their voice is heard. Abortion rights remain a controversial issue in the state of Utah, although Fox 13 did not witness any counter protesters at today's rally. Reporting in Salt Lake City, Jenna Bree, Fox 13 News, Utah. Both sides of the abortion debate continued to react to the leak. We'll share more local reaction, plus what exactly would happen here in Utah 
if Roe versus Wade is overturned. That's coming up at 930. Well, I'll tell you what, cool, windy, and raining in many places. Allison, uh, what else are we going to see? A wild day weather-wise here across the state. We're still seeing some of those scattered showers across the north. Our wind right now into central and southern Utah, about 15 to 30 miles per hour for Blanding, Bryce Canyon, Cedar City, and for Price. So let me show you satellite and radar as we're still seeing quite a few showers, mainly into northwest Utah along the Colorado border near Wendover. So valley rain, mountain snowfall with overnight temps tonight that could bring some more snow to some of the benches or higher valleys and then through central Utah fairly dry currently same thing for southern Utah but we head into the seven day forecast and it's all over the place temperatures right now in the 40s and 50s it is a good 20 to 30 degrees colder out here across the state compared to this time 24 hours ago. Wind will be calming down tonight. So when you wake up tomorrow morning, less of a breeze, but still some chances for precipitation. Where we could see slick roads tomorrow morning and when we'll heat up, plus our next chance for snow here in Salt Lake City. A water main break causes a massive destructive mess in Salt Lake City. Hear from neighbors who were affected, including one man whose car fell into a sinkhole. The lieutenant governor takes political leaders and state officials on a boat tour of the Great Salt Lake. We tag along. Honestly, I do it because of my students. I mean, they're amazing people. And the Fox 13 Dream Team honors a teacher who goes above and beyond to make a difference. You don't want to miss this incredible Dream Team surprise. A water main break in Salt Lake City early this morning created a sinkhole that swallowed an entire car. You're looking at it right there. <laughs> it was caught on camera, as you can see. It happened at about 5.30 a.m. near 1300 South between 700 and 800 West. Jalil Reynaga lives nearby and says the break was loud enough to wake him and his roommates. Then I woke up the other roommates and then we went upstairs. And this is when uh, the car was shaking back and forth until it got sucked up and fell in where it is right now. Firefighters say two homes were also damaged, but no one was hurt. And there's what's left of that car. The cause of the break is under investigation. The Great Salt Lake is projected to hit a record low this year. Lieutenant Governor Deidre Henderson is rallying political leaders to do more to save it. She took them on a boat tour today, and Fox 13 News political reporter Ben Winslow tagged along. Lieutenant Governor Deidre Henderson accompanied lawmakers and state officials on a boat tour of the Great Salt Lake. It's hard to appreciate how low it is when you, when you haven't seen it. They looked at the declining lake levels and the impact it's had. I think one of the things that has most impressed me today is um, just how impactful the Great Salt Lake is to everything that we do in Utah, to our water, um, to our, our air quality, to our quality of life. And it's something that we uh, haven't talked enough about. The lake has dropped 11 feet since it was first measured, and this year it will drop even further to a new historic low. We believe that the lake has peaked right now um, at about 4191. Point zero, and we're thinking that it will go down about two more feet. The shrinking lake has been blamed on a number of problems like water diversions for development and a changing climate. It has the potential to harm our snowpack, ecosystem for wildlife, and bring toxic dust storms into populated areas. I think the legislature will step up. The Utah State Legislature did pass new water conservation measures and is spending millions to try to get more water into the Great Salt Lake, but lawmakers acknowledge there's a new urgency. I think so, but I also think it's uh, it's it's what is that is left to do is something that we can handle, right? Like, it, yes, it's bad, yes, it's bleak, but now we're talking about it. Environmentalists and state officials don't think it's too late to save the lake. To conserve, to use less water, but then on a bigger picture to encourage county cities and counties, water conservancy districts, agricultural users to think about how they use water and use water more wisely because because we need to make it, we need the water to make it down here. A lot of those laws passed by the legislature will go into effect later this year, and you can expect lawmakers will be planning more legislation. On the Great Salt Lake, Ben Winslow, Fox 13 News, Utah.
Starting to see some wraparound moisture from our area of low pressure that's been impacting us the last few days. So we'll go ahead and start seeing that wraparound moisture as the system continues to make its way off to our east through tomorrow, but it's going to be very scattered. Then we'll have a break. Really nice conditions will be warming here by Thursday and Friday, close to 80 to 90 here across the state. We'll see additional clouds moving in at times. And then this upcoming weekend, we're going to see some storms, active weather, mainly off to our north. But by Sunday into Monday, our next system starts to impact us here in Utah. So for tonight, we're still seeing a few showers, mainly in northwest Utah for Box Elder and Tooele counties near I-80 towards Wendover. Bigger picture, you'll notice that the system is really beginning to move off to our east. We're still going to see some lingering showers into tomorrow. Less wind tonight, still a little breezy though for price and then down into Blanding, Bryce Canyon and Cedar City around 15 to 30 miles per hour for those wind gusts. Temperatures here across the state close to 45 to 50. So it's definitely cool out there. Much cooler compared to this time 24 hours ago, but it's less windy here along the Wasatch Front. We will continue to see some breezy conditions down south of I-70 through about midnight tonight. Then big improvements overnight with less wind into tomorrow morning and tomorrow afternoon. Salt Lake City tonight, temperatures close to 40 for much of the evening with still some chances for rain and snow overnight. Overnight temps here in Salt Lake, 40 degrees, chance for some snow down to the benches to mix in as a possibility if there's any heavier bands that set up. But overall, we're looking at much drier conditions tomorrow afternoon and a cool start tomorrow. 30s and 40s here across the state. Salt Lake City tomorrow for a high 61 degrees, chances for precipitation early in the day. Then we'll start seeing that really tapering off. So tomorrow at 4 p.m., we're close to 55 to 60 for Price, Provo, Eagle Mountain, Tooele, Salt Lake, Ogden, for the Cache Valley, mid to upper 50s tomorrow. St. George close to 80. Then our chance of precipitation will start to go up again as we head into this upcoming weekend. But for tomorrow, we're looking at widely scattered to scattered chances here in Salt Lake, then a break. And then you'll notice that chance of precipitation Friday night through Sunday day. It's not very likely widely scattered to isolated and then Sunday night into Monday. We'll continue with some more chances. Not all of you will be not all of you will see precipitation, but those of you who do, we could see some even cool enough temperatures by Monday morning that we could maybe even see some more snow here in Salt Lake City. So let me show you this cool down because it's going to be drastic. St. George, you're hot Thursday, Friday, Saturday near 90. Low 80s for Sunday with wind 70 by Monday. Here in Salt Lake, we're close to 80 Thursday, Friday. Cooler this weekend. Chances for some snow by early Monday. We'll talk more about that later in the hour. All right, Allison, thanks. Ukrainian citizens trapped in a steel plant in a city under attack by Russian forces. How they've managed to escape to safety. And the late Utah Senator Orrin Hatch will lie in state at the state capitol tomorrow, remembering his legacy coming up. Russian President Vladimir Putin could formally declare war on Ukraine as soon as next Monday, otherwise known as Victory Day in Russia. The move would unleash Russia's full military reserves as its invasion of Ukraine continues to languish and falter. Meanwhile, evacuees, evacuees from a Mariupol state, uh, steel plant arrived in town three hours away today. We get civilians out of the rubble with ropes. It's the elderly, women and children. A Ukrainian army commander says heavy shelling continues at the plant. There's a new push to get more electric vehicles on the highway. The Biden administration says it'll give $3.1 billion to U.S. companies that make and recycle lithium-ion batteries. It's part of the administration's push to boost sales of electric vehicles. The money will help increase supplies. President Biden has set a goal to have EVs make up half of all vehicle sales in America by 2030. The demand for COVID-19 protection has sent Pfizer's sales soaring. The company made nearly $26 billion in the first three months 
of this year. That is a 77% profit increase and much better than expected. The bulk of the sales came from its COVID-19 vaccine and new pills to treat the virus. The Pfizer vaccine already ranks among the most used shots in the world. Johnny Depp's attorneys rested their case today after nearly two weeks of testimony from the actor himself and more than a dozen key witnesses. The case now shifts to the defense as Amber Heard's first witness took the stand today. A psychologist claimed Heard was the victim of abuse on multiple occasions during her multi-year marriage to Depp. The psychologist said Depp subjected Heard to abusive psychological and sexual behavior. There are indications, as I mentioned before, of the sexual assault and the sexual abuse and, and how he would, you know, when he was angry and when he was drunk, it was mostly drug and, and, and dr alcohol um, fueled rage when he would, you know, throw her on the bed and try to have sex with her. Heard's attorneys asked the judge to dismiss the case, saying Depp did not provide sufficient evidence to prove his case. The judge rejected Heard's motion to dismiss. Amber Heard is expected to take the stand tomorrow. If the court goes the way that a leaked draft suggests, Utah could have one of the strictest abortion bans in the country. Forgiving student debt. President Biden is considering it again, but not for everyone. You just know Miss Wilson, Heather, will just be there always for her kids and just in time for teacher appreciation week an unforgettable dream team surprise for one utah teacher coming up we continue to track the fallout of this unprecedented leak of a draft opinion from the u.s supreme court that could signal the overturning of Roe v. Wade. Fox 13 News spoke with advocates from both Pro-Life Utah and the Utah chapter of Planned Parenthood today. Of course, they have polar opposite stances on abortion, but they are equally stunned that the landmark case could be overturned. I have to take a step back and realize that the Supreme Court decision has not been handed down. I have to say I was devastated when I first heard the news, but taking a deep breath and focusing on the word draft allowed me to move on. The court's final decision will likely be handed down in June or July. Now, Utah law impacting abortion could go in more than one direction, depending on the scope of the Supreme Court's final decision. Fox 13 News anchor Max Roth takes an in-depth look. If the court decides in favor of Mississippi, what happens in Utah will depend on the scope of the court's decision. Utah has two laws already passed and poised to go into effect. It's possible the court settles on a position more moderate than the leaked draft. That might mean upholding Mississippi's 15-week ban without overturning Roe v. Wade entirely. Utah has an 18-week ban on the books. It passed in 2019, and Utah's attorney general agreed to delay enforcement until the high court made a ruling. The draft opinion leaked would erase Roe as the law of the land if it became the final decision. Now that would trigger a far more restrictive Utah law passed in 2020. In SB 174, the legislature effectively outlawed elective abortions from conception to birth. Both laws allow three categories of exceptions. The first is to save the mother's life or her physical health from substantial and irreversible impairment of major bodily function. Second, if two doctors agree in writing that the fetus has a condition that is lethal or that causes a severe brain abnormality, which means a malformation or defect that causes an individual to live in a mentally vegetative state. And third, if the pregnancy is the result of rape or incest, and in that case, the physician must confirm the crime was reported to law enforcement. A doctor defying the more sweeping law there would be considered guilty of a second degree felony. Now, all of that depends on the court's final decision, not on a leaked draft. Another possibility is that Congress could vote abortion rights into federal law, which would supersede state law. In the newsroom, Max Roth, Fox 13 News, Utah. Now, the leak of the U.S. Supreme Court draft opinion is unprecedented and could affect confidence within the court itself. 
The information contained in the leak has sparked a public outcry and upset the country over what has been one of the most controversial rulings in the Supreme Court's history. Earlier tonight, I spoke with former U.S. District Judge and now University of Utah Law Professor Paul Cassell, who once clerked for U.S. Supreme Court Chief Justice Warren Burger. He calls the effect of the leak disturbing. It's going to be now very hard for the justices to discuss the cases, to, to work on clarifying language, maybe uh, negotiate different aspects of the opinion uh, in confidence because they have to worry about something leaking out. Cassell says this could potentially change the way the Supreme Court operates as a whole. He also says it's too early to tell what the actual ruling will look like based on the draft opinion, but in the end, the leak represents a breach of trust within the court. New at 9, West Valley City Police have arrested a homicide suspect. Police have connected 30-year-old Dion Jennings to the murder of 59-year-old Willie Houston this past Saturday. Investigators received a tip on where Jennings was, and that led to his arrest. Tomorrow, the late Utah Senator Orrin Hatch will lie in state in the Utah State Capitol Rotunda. Senator Hatch died late last Monday, or last month, I should say, surrounded by family in his Salt Lake City home. He was 88. Governor Cox has ordered both Utah and U.S. flags to fly at half-staff from sunrise to sunset tomorrow in Hatch's honor. He will lie in state from 2 p.m. to 8 p.m. tomorrow. He'll be laid to rest on Friday after funeral services at the University of Utah. Fox 13 News will have live coverage of tomorrow's events. President Biden is considering student loan debt forgiveness to help those struggling to pay it off. But a new study shows the nation's wealthiest households could get the biggest break. A January report from the Brookings Institution says the wealthiest 20% of households owe almost a third of all student loan debt. The middle 50% owes about 30%. The bottom 20%, the least wealthy, owe only 8% of all student loan debt. The president talked back on the campaign about uh, taking steps or looking at steps to help people making less than $125,000 a year. The report also says the future value of a college degree is often left out of conversations about student loan debt. On average, it found the typical college graduate makes about a million dollars more in a lifetime than someone with only a high school diploma. Coming up, phase two of construction at the Salt Lake International Airport begins. We'll show you what's being done. And coming up, still some areas of rain and snow here across Utah this evening and still windy across the south. I'll let you know when the storm will leave the state, plus when it's going to heat up before our next chance for snow here in the valleys. The CDC is monitoring a mysterious hepatitis outbreak that has spread to 10 states. The agency sent out an alert asking doctors to be on the lookout after an Alabama hospital reported a number of otherwise healthy children averaging four years old who had begun showing symptoms. We spoke to a Utah doctor about it today. We don't know what is to blame for these causes. We do, however, know that there is a commonality and most of these uh, small kids have been testing positive for adenovirus, particularly the number 41 subtype. Dr. Ross tells us further testing is needed to determine whether the virus is the cause of the outbreak. So far, no cases have been reported here in Utah. Phase two of construction at Salt Lake International Airport is underway. Project leaders say more gates will open as soon as a year from now. The new extension of Concourse A will house 22 Delta Airlines gates, while this next phase of the project won't be finished until November of next year. Crews are working to get four gates open next May. Even though they're dealing with supply chain issues and labor shortages, they are confident they'll be able to meet their deadline. So the importance of four gates is we have more and more passengers coming to the airport every day, 
And so any gate that we can deliver early is, is really going to be put to use immediately. The airport also announced what restaurants and retail shops will be coming during phase two of the construction. Mill Creek Coffee Roasters, Hugo Coffee, Rockwell's Ice Cream, and a Utah Jazz Pro Shop are among some of the businesses expected to find new homes at the airport. Still ahead, what better way to honor a teacher during Teacher Appreciation Week than with a surprise for the whole class? Watch as a special education teacher and her students receive an unforgettable Dream Team surprise. The NBA playoffs roll on with a couple of great games between the Bucks and Celtics and Warriors and Grizzlies. And I'll show you a great moment in Toronto between a Blue Jays fan and Yankees fan that will lift you up. The judge was on it. This is Teacher Appreciation Week, and the Fox 13 Dream Team had a special surprise for a very special teacher. Heather Wilson is a special education teacher in Tooele, who herself is deaf, but can read lips. As you might guess, everyone absolutely loves her. Late last week, the Fox 13 Dream Team gave Heather an unforgettable surprise. another Fox 13 Dream Team surprise. <laughs> Heather Wilson. Heather Wilson. Yes. I'm Bob Evans with Fox 13 yeah, News. Do you recognize me? You go to the post office often? Is that what you do? <laughs> Something like that. Yeah. And, and with me is Charmaine Wells Hi. from Mountain America Credit Union. Nice to meet you. And nice you. you have been selected, nominated, and selected as our Fox 13 Dream Team recipient. Well, thank you. But it is your heart. The fact that you have been working so diligently with these special needs students, these are for you, but that's just the beginning, and don't hide behind the flowers. <laughs> the reason we are here is because of what you pour into these students and have for so long. And we are here to say thank you. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. I don't know what to say. Tell us, why do you do what you do here? Oh my gosh, you just put me on the spot. Honestly, I do it because of my students. I mean, they're amazing people and they need to be given a chance. And just to see them thrive and grow and just flourish, that's just, that's what we're all about. How long have you been doing? So I've been out here in Tooele for about 16 years, but I was a para for 11, so quite a while. Well, I tell you what. Have you got a favorite student here, by the way? Um, I, have, I have eight of them in here right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, I tell you what, we, the flowers are just the beginning. What we have brought here with us is a spa package, right? Oh, yeah, day spa package oh, wow. with hand and stone from South Jordan. Oh, that'll be nice. Mm -hmm. Thank you so very much. Have you ever been to a day spa? I have not. Well, oh, it's a, you're going to love a it. it. It's about time you went. Yes, it is. And dinner and movie. Oh, wonderful. It'll be a full day. Yes. On top of that, Charlene has a special gift for you okay. and your class. We recognize and appreciate you for what you do. In addition to the pampering, we think you're going to care a lot more about this. What we have here are not just one, but two field trips to Hogel Zoo oh, nice. and to the Loveland Living Planet Aquarium oh, for 50 people, that. including the rides. Oh, that'll be fun. Yes, you guys, we get to go. <laughs> yeah. That'll be way fun. Yes. I think that'll be a lot of fun. Yeah, awesome. Thank you. Thank you. What do you think that will do for your students, that kind of exposure at the aquarium and the zoo? Just to get experience. I think a lot of times um, we lack experience, and just being able to experience different things I think is, is phenomenal. But also just even trying to see, hey, I want to learn more about this, and maybe that's a job or a field I want to go into. And it just gives more experience and opens the world. So. Well, on, on behalf of the Fox 13 Dream Team and Mountain America Credit Union, we want to say, Heather Wilson, thank you so much for everything that you do. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thank you. We just think a lot of Heather. And I'm glad that we have her for a little while. I mean, she's, 
she's not one that's going to be retiring soon. Or, but we, we are so glad that she's with us and with our post high school program. Miss Wilson deserves to earn the award. I'm excited to see the fishes swim around at the aquarium. She's just very dependable and reliable. You just know Miss Wilson, Heather, will just be there always for her kids. And, you know, we're really happy to have her on the staff. Dream Team! Congratulations, Heather Wilson. Now, if you'd like to nominate a special person in your life for a Dream Team surprise, go to fox13now.com slash contests. You'll find a link to the nomination form. Just fill it out and let us know exactly what they need and why they mean so much to you. Well, tomorrow morning when you wake up, we do have a chance for some areas of precipitation here across northern and central Utah. Temperatures close to 40 degrees here in Salt Lake. We'll see more sunshine during the second half of the day. What we're seeing right now is wraparound moisture from an area of low pressure that is moving off to our east and it has this counterclockwise motion. And that's why that storm is now coming out of the north, moving towards the south. So we look at the bigger picture here. The bulk of the system, as I mentioned, is off to our east right now, but we're going to continue with some areas of rain and snow tonight. Temperatures when you first wake up tomorrow morning, close to 40 to 45 for Tooele, Salt Lake and Ogden. St. George tomorrow near 50 degrees. We do have the chance for some winter driving conditions between the Wasatch Mountains and up into Wyoming, especially overnight. We could see a couple of inches of snow impacting some of the roadways in northeast Utah. But tomorrow here in Salt Lake highs in the 60s, Ogden 60, Provo close to 60, chance for some earlier precipitation. And then for Cedar City 63 tomorrow, Ridgefield 60, St. George 81 degrees and for eastern Utah. Moab 66, Price 61, Vernal close to 60 tomorrow. So let me show you this future cast because, as I mentioned, up into Wyoming, that's when we're going to see some winter driving conditions overnight, especially after midnight tonight into early tomorrow morning. That'll be sticking around through about 10 a.m. in Wyoming. We'll see some scattered showers here across central and eastern Utah. Then this weekend, some storms will be drifting by to our north. And then our next best chance for a more widespread storm to move in will be Sunday into Monday. And with this system, we could see some snow mixing in again down to the valley floors. But first, let's talk about rain projection out of this system that we still have right now. Additional precipitation, we're looking at potentials for less than a tenth of an inch of rain. And for additional snowfall up in the mountains, we're looking at potentially three to six inches of snow with some locally higher amounts possible for the UNS. But for much of the mountains of Utah, we're looking at another additional inch or so of snow. For St. George, you're close to 80 degrees tomorrow, 90 Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Low 80s Sunday with wind kicking up ahead of 70 on Monday. Here in Salt Lake, we have 70s, close to 80 Thursday, Friday. 61 for Saturday, 57 for Sunday, 51 only for a high on Monday with some chances for valley rain and snow. Well, while the Jazz conduct their exit interviews, the NBA playoffs continue with the second round. Game two between the Warriors and Grizzlies. This one's been fun to watch. Stephen Curry first with the Warriors in the paint, spins and hits the jumper. Then it's Andrew Wiggins right down the lane to the rim. The power slam. Wiggins with authority on that throwdown. How about John Morant? He elevates and finishes at the rim. This guy is explosive. And just before the half, he spins and scores tough shot. It's close in the fourth with the Warriors up by three. Game two in the East between the Bucks and Celtics. Boston needs a win to even the series. They came out playing great in the first quarter. Jalen Brown, how about that, crosses over. Grayson Allen knocks down the jumper. He led the Celtics with 30 points. Giannis Antetokounmpo, another big game for the Bucks, takes it all the way in. Two of his 28 points, but the Celtics led it by 25 at the half. Too much Boston. Jason Tatum with the steal and the big finish in the fourth quarter. Then he put it away with this corner three. He had 29 points. The Celtics won at 109-86 to even up the series at a game apiece. Salt Lake Bees hosting Tacoma at Smith's Ballpark tonight. The Rainiers jumped out to a 7-0 lead. 
but in the bottom of the third, Bees get on the board. Chad Wallach grounds it to base hit, seven to two Bees. Same inning, Monte Harrison connects, gets the drop in center field to hustle home. Bees are safe to tie it up, oh, making a one run gain. Then Mingenera's Sierra swings the foul, bounces off the ankle of the pitcher. RBI single, the Bees battle back, but Tacoma won it 13 to 11. Joe Adele is headed back to Salt Lake for the Bees. The Angels optioned their one-time number one prospect to AAA today and recalled infielder Jose Rojas. In 19 games with the Angels this season, he batted 231, three home runs and nine RBIs, but he struggled against left-handed pitching. The Bees started a six-game homestand tonight against Tacoma. We end with a great moment. Yankee star Aaron Judd hit a home run in Toronto. A Blue Jay fan picked up the ball, celebrates for a moment, then he gives the ball away to a young Yankee fan wearing an Aaron Judge jersey. And you can see how much that meant to that young fan. Pretty special moment right there between a young Yankee fan and a very nice Blue Jay oh, fan. My Walter will goodness. remember that moment for a long, long time. And so will we. Yeah, it's been a tough news day. That's a good way to brighten things up. It sure is. Jeff, thank you so much for that. We'll be right back. Finally, from posty to daddy. That's right. Utah's favorite genre bending and blending rapper, Post Malone, is going to be a father. TMZ is report reporting Post Malone and his girlfriend celebrated the baby in waiting at a private party in Southern California over the weekend. This is the 26 year old's first baby and not the only big thing on the horizon. His new album, 12 Carat Toothache, is expected to drop next month. Congratulations, Posty. <laughs> <laughs> Quick cast up next.